CNN's Don Lemon's face appeared to turn to liquid and melt off as he listens to a royal commentator say, you know what, there should be reparations and it should be paid for by the African nations that sold their own people into slavery. And uh, I, I don't think that's what Don Lemon expected to hear. He was basically saying this. Here's the gist of the story. King Charles is inheriting a vast wealth from the royal family, a billion dollar estate from the crown. And apparently he doesn't got to pay taxes on it. And so Don Lemon's like, well, you know, a lot of people are upset because, you know, there was slavery and shouldn't they pay reparations? And this British royal commentator says, yes, but you got to go to the beginning of the supply chain. Now, I don't want to recite the entirety of the video for you, so I'll play it. But Don Lemon, you can see the sort of scowl, sour face is just like nods along like a Bleh. but I got I, I got to miss. I, I really don't know how much this dude cares. He used to be very much, and he still kind of is, this woke pundit, but now they're moving him from his night show to his morning show. But I think this is an important, this is an important story because right now there's another story that's going viral. It has to do with a movie called The Woman King, which leftists, I believe leftists, are calling for a boycott over because it is, it's a movie about an African nation that sold people, and not, not just its own, but enemy, uh, its enemies, into slavery to white colonial slave traffickers. And they tried to downplay it and make it seem like this warlord of a woman opposed slavery when she very much supported it. So now, simultaneously, the left is saying it's a great film. Well, the establishment woke left. And then the anti-establishment woke left, which they sort of have an overlap, is like, we should boycott the film. Going to show. Get woke, go broke. There's no solution. There's no answer. But I do want to talk about reparations. And uh, this woman says something interesting. So let's play. And you can hear what she has to say. You have those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism. And they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back. And, uh, and members back. of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Oh, Where was the beginning of the face. supply chain? That was in Africa. And when the, across the entire world, when <laughs> slavery was taking uh -oh. place, which He's was the first along, nation in the yes. world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2000... Naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. 2000. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're talking. Uh oh, look at his face. Look at Don Lemon's face. He's like, mm, you can like that. Come on. You can see it right there. Let's play it again. You can see the difference. You can see the difference. All right, I'm going to play it again. Watch, watch, watch. The African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say <laughs> who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. OK, uh, part, <laughs> part of me is like, I don't think Don Lemon's actually listening, but there's like a moment where his like his face does like a like a scowl. Oh, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm seeing what I want to see, but clearly not what he expected to hear now. Let's talk about reparations. 2,000 naval men died in the high seas trying to stop slavery. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of the supply chain, say who is rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. Now, the best part is she says we should pay reparations to the families of those men, men who died on the high seas. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 2,000, you say? Well, I don't disagree. I would just like to bring you to the American Civil War. 365,000 total deaths. Man. And that's the the unite the union side. It appears I, I think suffered substantially more deaths. You had 290,000 dead on the Confederate side. 365,000 dead on the union side. However, there were more casualties total, which means wounded and captured. Of the captured on the on the Confederate side, 436,000 on the Union side, 181,000. Very much so. The Union was was making its way through the South. You had Jackson's march to the sea. Anyway, a lot of really bad stuff happened. But overall, around a million plus dead. Crazy. 
You want to talk about reparations, Don Lemon? You want to talk about this narrative that the crown should be paying reparations? I agree with what this woman was saying. I agree. First and foremost, slavery is abhorrent. It's wrong. And I'm glad that we've done away with it. I think the Civil War is a very contentious issue historically because you had a South that, you know, I can understand the South was looking at what was going on in the federal government and, they're, and, they're, and they were saying, you're not enforcing your own laws. You're supposed to have an agreement with us. There's supposed to be a union a republic. And there wasn't. But I'm also kind of like, yeah, but your reason for your complaints are kind of bunk and nightmarish. Basically, the South was upset because there was the Fugitive Slave Act and the North was not abiding by the federal law. The federal law stated that if a, a slave fled to the northern states, to free states, they'd have to be returned. And the northern states were like, sure, but then wouldn't do it. So the South was like, yo, that and a bunch of other reasons. If you're not abiding by the law we set forth, why should we even be in this union? So I look at that and I'm like, I get it. Like, if we as a republic said that, you know, something like you shouldn't be allowed to abort babies and then a whole bunch of states kept doing it, you'd be like, OK, why are we even a country if we agree on the law and you, you won't follow it? However, there's an issue of morality and values. Slavery being one of the most disgusting and psychotic things imaginable. Fortunately, we live in a time where we understand this. The South being like, our rights are being abused and you won't follow the law, a law that is really disgusting. Okay. So I got to tell you, from like a logical legal standpoint, I can certainly understand the argument. But from a human, moral and value based system, it needed to happen. The South needed to be stopped. Slavery needed to be ended across the board. We were abolishing it. So here's where we come to people like Don Lemon. They say people want reparations. Now, I know he's asking a question. I'm not going to put the question on him. People are asking and demanding reparations. But let me just say this plain and simple. 2,000, madam, you say 2,000 men, men and women died on the high or men died on the high seas and that we sh there, there should be reparations paid to those families. What about the 365,000 total dead Union soldiers? What about the 365,000 total dead Union soldiers? I'm not going to include the Confederates in that, okay? And what about the captured and the wounded? If reparations are going to be paid, shouldn't they be paid to the families of those who died and sacrificed themselves to end slavery? You see, here, here's, here's the issue, man. I don't understand this idea that the children of uh, the, the, these people who were never slaves, they're the ancestors of people who were, should receive reparations. Now, hold on, hold on. I mean this in terms of like direct, direct cash payments or, you know, like some kind of benefit, be it like tuition or something. I think we're at the point now where we've made such, we've made such dramatic changes that probably what we should do is just class based, which likely would overwhelmingly end up benefiting uh, descendants of slavery. But it would also make sure that no one gets left behind, no matter what your race is. But if you want to play the reparations game, I'll outright be like, OK, the families of those who died in the Civil War, they should uh, be paid reparations, shouldn't they? I mean, they gave their lives. What about their descendants? Those kids who were orphaned, they grew up with nothing in squalor. What about them? They should get reparations too, right? They're the ones who sacrificed, whose families were sacrificed to end slavery. Now, in reality, I don't care for any of this historical sins of the father stuff. I think it just really comes down to let's help end poverty. It's not a simple thing. And maybe it never, it's never possible because even right now, I'll tell you this, the, the funniest thing, I was, uh, I was having uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast and I sprinkled some black peppercorns all over my delicious eggs, black pepper, crushed black pepper. Poor people have crushed black pepper. It used to be that wars were fought and people died for such, such a delicious spice. Now it is ubiquitous because we do end poverty. What I mean to say is, we should work towards lifting up those at the at the lowest point in our in our of our classes in society. Now, if you think that there is institutional racism and black people are disproportionately negatively impacted, then by targeting the lower classes, your own argument suggests they will be benefited. But we won't we won't leave behind the children of those who were orphaned due to the war or anything like that. Right. Right. So what's the problem? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the latest controversy. Here you go. Viola Davis responds to boycott woman king controversy. You're not going to win an argument on Twitter, Davis said. Here's the story from AV Club. Over the weekend, despite having no recognizable IP franchise connections, 
or a big fighter jet, the Woman King climbed to the top of the box office with a $19 million opening. It was an unlikely success that may not be as flashy as Avengers Endgame $300 million opening, but is exciting to have an original action epic at the top of the box office for a change. One doesn't even need to see another movie before seeing the Woman King. However, those who read up on the Dahomey Kingdom before the film had some concerns. The Dahomey Kingdom, which the Woman King tells mostly fictionalized account of, was involved in the slave trade. And critics of the film online accused its depiction of whitewashing and glorifying slavers. Speaking with Variety, Davis and her co-star, producing partner and husband Julius Tennant defended the film, first by expressing the futility of arguing with people on social media. Oh, be quiet. Hypocrites. As these leftists accurately point out, the Dami Kingdom were slavers. They were black colonial slavers. They expanded. They were empirical. And when they invaded and attacked their neighbors, they would take them and sell them into slavery. And thus, you get this movie, which apparently has scenes where the main character is like going to the king and being like, slavery is wrong. You shouldn't do it. When in reality, this woman was very much like, get more slaves and sell them. Here we go. I agree with director, director Gina Price Bythewoods, say, uh, Bythewoods saying is you're not going to win an argument on Twitter, Davis said. We entered the story where the kingdom was in flux at a crossroads. They were looking to find some way to keep their civilization and kingdom alive. It wasn't until the late 1800s that they were decimated. Most of the story is fictionalized. It has to be. What? So then what are we even talking about? Okay, Tenen continued by describing the movie as an ed- as edutainment insisting that the production has to entertain people because otherwise that would be in a documentary. If the film didn't entertain, then people wouldn't be in the theaters doing the same thing we saw this weekend. We didn't want to shy away from the truth. The history is massive and there are truths on that that are there. If people want to learn more, they can investigate more. Ultimately, Davis insists that the movie examines women who were forced into battle or face death. They were recruited between the ages of eight and 14. They were recruited by the king to fight for the kingdom of Dahomey. They were not allowed to marry or have children. The ones who refused the call were beheaded. Davis doesn't seem too concerned with the criticism. Early this year, she responded to calls for boycotts. Don't come see it then. You're sending a message that black women can't lead a box office globally and that you are supporting the narrative. Oh, shut up, dude. I agree with the left on this one. You whitewashed slavers. This is establishment wokeness, okay? You want to make a movie about colonial slavers, make it, show it for what it is. You want to do, this is what they're doing. It's whitewashing is one way to put it. I guess, you know, they're trying to clean the narrative and make it seem like these people are heroes, but they're not. All in the name of wokeness. Don't come see it. But speaking of the variety, she focused on positivity she experienced in the audience enjoyment. I saw a TikTok video today of women in a bathroom of an AMC theater, and I don't think they knew each other. They were all chanting and ruminating that cannot cannot be quantified by words. Amazing. What are the comments? If here we go, some comments here. If most of your story has to be fictionalized, maybe you should tell another story. And how could your film be edutainment if all the history you're educating people about is made up? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Edutainment. People eat up the crown and anything else about the monarchy famously known for slave trading and don't say ish. Okay, here's the point. When we talk about the crown, We know that they were engaged in the slave trade. We talk about it being bad and how it needed to be ended. And they did end it. They did. Um, It's a really interesting argument. There was I was reading about the American uh, Revolution. Thomas Jefferson opposed slavery. Yet he had slaves. Seems a bit hypocritical. Yeah, I can say that. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson wanted to include one uh, complaint because it lists a bunch of complaints that the crown stole people from their homeland and brought them to the U.S. to have them wage war against the people of the United of the Americas. It was removed, however, out of fear that I think it was South Carolina and Georgia. They would not have joined the the fight for independence if that was included. In fact, Quebec, which also was a colony of the crown, refused to join. There could have been 14 colonies. How about that? And so they said, "Okay, fine. They were willing to accept slavery if it meant winning their independence. I think ultimately it was a bad thing that they, I think Thomas Jefferson should have put it in because many of these founding fathers thought they were going to lose anyway, but they really needed South Carolina and Georgia. So they said, fine, we'll remove it. And besides, many of them had slaves, not all of them. Some of the founding fathers never had slaves and thought it was terrible. The UK abolished slavery well before the US did. And the argument is slavery would have ended in the United States sooner 
if the U.S. did not declare independence. Interesting. But I think that's missing a point. If the crown sought to end slavery as early as it did, the U.S. Look, the slavery, the, the war, the Civil War started in 1861. I believe the crown ended slavery in something like 1822 or 1829 or something like that. If they did, with the U.S. still being overwhelmingly pro-slavery for the most part, then it would have just triggered a war for independence. Maybe it would have avoided the Revolutionary War and avoided the Civil War, but created a sort of merging of the two, a, a, a war for independence in defense of slavery. But maybe not. Maybe even as early as then, you would have seen many northern states saying outright, mm, I don't know about that, and they'd be unwilling to fight. And thus, only southern states would have actually decided to fight for independence. I don't know for sure. I don't know. I can't tell you. Everybody wants to speculate as to what would have happened. But what we're going to get is whitewashed history from Vox. How the woman king confronts Africa's role in the slave trade. Oh, does it? Blah, blah, blah. They say Villa's, Villa Davis stars the group's general, Naniska, who works to convince the young king Gezo to end the kingdom's role in the slave trade. The film was shot in South Africa from a screenplay by Dennis Stevens, blah, blah, blah. Except uh, that's not true. That's uh, not what happened. The individual was very much in favor of it, did not tell them to stop doing it. It's just ridiculous. This is an action movie starring black women set two centuries ago where men are barely on screen. What were the biggest challenges? Uh, I just look. Here's my thing. I don't care. Have your movie. Congratulations. Looks looks well made. I'm, you know, people seem to like it. But I just want to point out that you can't win. They want, the left wants to boycott this because it's, a, it's showing colonizers who are slavers. Yeah, OK. Even though it is black women, you see, that is corporate wokeism right there. You've got the anti-establishment woke people who are looking at this and are outright saying like, yo, you're whitewashing slave traders. And you've got the establishment corporate woke being like, who cares? It's a movie of all black women with barely any men. Amazing, isn't it? Look, you can't please the left. So pandering with this get woke, go broke stuff is, just a, is, is a waste of time. Making, making woke movies in an attempt to, to placate anybody, it's just not going to happen. Now, if you want to make a movie starring black women, I, I don't care. I say more power to you. They, they made $19 million. Congratulations. I don't know what the budget was. I can't imagine it was that much because, well, actually, you know, maybe they had to make costumes and armor and location and stuff. So maybe, but $19 million is pretty good. I don't care if you want to have your movie. I really don't. But don't give us this, this pandering garbage, white, white, uh, you know, whitewashing, or whatever you want to call it, ignoring the history of these people. Which brings me back to our good friend Don Lemon. You want to play games, my friend? Get educated. His face just looks like a scowl. Just the whole time. He's, he's just, he's, you know, just... Ugh. But she's right. It is often overlooked... And Bill Maher recently had a rant talking about this. So I hear I, I, I didn't watch the rant, but I've seen some people tweeting about it where he was like, slavery has been around forever. Tons of countries practice slavery and slavery still exists today. And it was the colonies, the crown, Western nations that ended it. Sort of. Sort of. You know, slavery still exists in America today. And I think it's horrible. And I will shout out our good friend Kanye West. Big fan. Kanye West said something like repeal the 13th Amendment and everybody lost their minds. They were like the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. What's wrong with you, Kanye? Kanye is not wrong. The 13th Amendment did not abolish slavery. It set due process standards by which we can continue to engage in slavery. What we need is an amendment that says never will we allow slavery. The argument is that if you are found to have broken the law through due process, you can be enslaved. No, that should not be tolerated. We should not have for any reason the, the, the legal precedent or, or um, justification for enslaving people. So basically what you get now is prison labor. They get 10 cents an hour, things like that. Yeah. So you have in California inmates being paid something like a dollar an hour, or I think it might be like 14 bucks an hour to fight wildfires, effectively being used as cheap slave labor to risk their lives. No, I understand the argument. They have wronged society and they can pay their debt to society. Maybe if you want to make the argument that 
people can opt in if they choose to reduce sentencing, to reduce their sentence by doing community work. I actually think that's good. If someone breaks the law in a serious way, they get criminally charged. I think one thing we can do across the board is house arrest and community service for most crimes, particularly nonviolent ones. So let's say you committed uh, um, uh, fraud, serious crime, serious felony. Okay, how about you have to do community service and house arrest? Now, we do this a lot for people. A lot of people get minimum security prisons or house arrest. I'm saying substantially more. Instead of locking people in prisons where many, many of these younger people get hardened, we put them in a house and we say, you can only leave to go to work and then you go to work. And that's it. For violent crimes, that's when you get locked up. So I, I think there, there's, there's grounds for something like this, but not to make people, you know, just work for the sake of work. No, I think that if you're working, benefiting society you are paying your debt back and that should reduce your sentence. So instead of having someone just work in general, you're in jail. Now you work. Mm -mm. Now they do pay them like pennies an hour, dollar an hour. Sometimes I think like even 14, but I'm not a fan for the most part of the state taking someone in and then saying you have to work for us. If people choose to do so, they should get reduced sentencing or something like that because you're, you're benefiting society. But I still think there's problems with how we handle the idea of slavery through due process. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. But um, we'll throw it back to our good friend, Don Lemon. Don, this is the reality. Today, slavery still exists. And there are people who died to end it. Do they get reparations too? And if not, why not? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.